Hello everyone, if you've been struggling with the chords, scales, solos and riffs you've been trying to play on your guitar, or if you've experienced pain or discomfort in your hand and fingers, then you will have probably asked yourself the most ancient primordial question that all guitar players eventually have to face. What do I do with this? In a previous video I taught you the three keys of proper finger and hand positioning on the guitar, but we focused on these four fingers and not on the thumb, so today we'll show you exactly where to place it and the how and the why. Let's talk about finger pressure first. The thumb has anatomically the largest and strongest muscles in the hand and they can exert quite a bit of force and a common mistake among guitar players is to think that we should exert that force usually in an attempt to create more finger pressure with these four fingers the ones that are actually hitting the strings but if you want to be able to use your thumb correctly without it getting injured or sore you actually have to develop strength in these four fingers without them unloading it all on the thumb. Remember, no matter how hard you press, there are no strings back here. So if you want to increase your endurance or your strength, you have to work on the four fretting fingers. As a matter of fact, I had a video not too long ago on this, so after this video is over, you can check it out, I'll link it above and below. Next, we should talk about where to put the thumb, horizontally and vertically, how do we place it? And horizontally, I suggest you try to roughly keep it between your index and middle finger. The reason for this is very simple. I always like to relax completely when I play, so if I completely relax my hand and bring it up, this is where my thumb rests naturally. So all I want to do is be as close to this position as possible when I play. Now things might vary slightly to the left or right, but this is a very good starting point. If you have a tendency to bring your thumb in toward your little finger or maybe out here, kind of like a hitchhiker, then you really are going against the natural disposition and shape of the hand. And you're doing this at your own peril. I've seen a lot of people develop tendon problems, even the muscle here and even the joints on the thumb and the rest of the hand because they must apply so much pressure to play because none of the parts of the hand are contributing to the actual playing. You can have a little variation here and there, but usually try to follow this rule of the index and middle finger. Vertically, I like to keep my thumb around the middle of the neck. So I would have this part of the finger here, the beginning of the tip, touching the highest point of the curvature of the neck. And as a general rule, I tell my students that I don't want to see their thumb. So you can use a mirror if you don't have a good teacher, you can use a selfie camera, but make sure as you play you don't start seeing your thumb creeping up. Another great tip to know where to start more or less is to use an F major chord, a very simple six string bar chord. And most players when they play bar chords they are forced into a good position. Now I know a lot of you watching this are concerned about hand size. What if my hand is bigger or smaller? What if my fingers are shorter or longer? And while it's true that hand size and finger length might require some adjustments here and there, these principles will work with any hand size because they follow the natural disposition of the hand. Not because I say so, but because this is what we got. We got a hand with five fingers and a guitar neck. As we play all across the fretboard and across the strings, then these rules might be slightly adjusted. For example, if I'm playing a scale up and down the six strings, I might alter very slightly my thumb height to follow the hand movement. If I'm doing a lot of bendings and vibrato, I might change my hand position drastically to adapt to the new forces at play. But when we play, so to speak, normal stuff, then these principles will serve you very well. Keep these tips in mind and try to implement them into your own process and you should be all set. If you want to dig deeper into technique and improve your playing even further, I think you could do a lot worse than trying out my books and I certainly appreciate your support. You can also check out this video here for finger strength and endurance and in this one I will tell you all you need to know about playing better but also in a safer way to avoid pain and injury. Thank you as always very much for being there and I will see you on the next video.